This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. When God has spoken something to you, you have the wisdom that's from above. What has he said to you that is constantly being confirmed? Are you going to be willing to yield? I want you to look at your life, your family, your friendships, your job, your hobbies, every single piece that makes up your life. God cares about it. And I'm on a mission to show you how to take back the victory in all those pieces. How every single piece of your life is covered under this grace. So join me July 6th through the 10th for Grace Life 2020. Register now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. And remember, no peace left behind. versus spiritual blindness or spiritual blindness versus clarity. And I, frankly, I thought I was through with it. I, there were four scriptures left, and I'm like thinking, well, there are just four scriptures. I'll pick it up the next time. And I could not shake this. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I need to look at it again. And man, when I did, a tsunami just hit me. Uh, things that we need to understand that God is committed in this area of guidance. He is committed in this area of guiding you to the will of God for your life. Everybody in here has a purpose. Everybody in here, God has a plan for your life. And uh, from what I could see through these scriptures that I'm going to share this morning, he's not just dependent on you to get there. He has made a commitment to do whatever needs to be done and to allow whatever needs to be done in your life to help you to arrive at that place where you're supposed to be. I'm now understanding how important it is now when Paul talked about contentment, that there are lots of courses that a person may have to take in order to arrive successfully. And when I say arrive successfully, I mean to be able to arrive at that destination and be prepared to be successful in that destination. There's a purpose and there's a plan for everybody in this room. There, there has been a distribution of gifts and anointings that have been put on every person in this room. You've been wired a particular way so you can carry out the, the purpose that God has for your life. And there's no wasted life in this place. There's no person in this place this morning where you can say, well, you know, I don't have a purpose. And you may look frustrated. You may not know the plan of God for your life. There is a plan for your life, and God is committed to helping you to arrive at that place for your life. And I, I want you to see this, how, you know, you really, you, you, we got to be careful not to buy into what the unsaved world puts out there for your thinking. You've got to stick with the Word of God, and you've got to make it a discipline. I believe desire gives birth to discipline. I think we've said discipline give. We've tried to discipline ourselves to get the desire. I believe it's the other way around. I believe when you desire things, because of your desire, you end up doing things. How many of you like to eat? You figure out how to do that every day, don't you? You're disciplined in doing that. And so when you have a desire for God and a relationship that you're pursuing where God is concerned, you'll find disciplines being born out of the desire that you have. 
Now, as we look at this today, this is God's promise and God's willingness and commitment to guide you to the path that you were born to go down. Guidance to the place and the destiny of your life. And believe me, I know well that sometimes you end up in places and you, you think, where is God? What did I do? Are you mad at me? Did I do something wrong? All involved in his plan to get you and to prepare you so you'll be ready when you arrive at that destination in your life. And the church said, amen. amen. So let's begin this morning in Psalms 119. 130. I want to use this as a text this morning because I, I truly believe that if we're going to start down that path, we're going to have to start with this, and we have to really lay hold of this. There's something about the Christian getting in God's Word and coming to a place where you desire God's Word, and you kind of get to the place where you stop trying to have church, and church becomes the place where you express your relationship and your love for God. In Psalms 119, verse 30, let's read it out loud together. He says, The entrance of thy words give light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. I believe that true clarity starts with the entrance of God's word. I believe if we're going to see clearly, I believe as we, if we're going to see the right dispensations and see through the lens of grace, all of that starts with allowing the word to be a part of your life. So the question you've got to ask yourself, and, and here's how I study Scripture. I read it, and then I immediately ask myself, now, where do I fit in this? Am I doing this? Am I not doing this? Have I neglected this? That, I'm not just reading the Word like you would read a novel. I'm reading this Word because it, it becomes the checklist for my life. And when I read something, I don't want to just read over it and say, well, that's for somebody else. I want to read it, and I want to ask myself, is this true in my life? You know, a while back I asked myself, am I satisfied with the amount of time that I'm spending in the Word? It changed my life because the answer was no. And I think a lot of times people are trying to pursue certain things from God, and they're even trying to pursue God, but you're doing that without allowing the Word to enter. The entrance of that Word will bring light, and I believe it starts there with every person. Having a desire to want to get God's Word, not just at church. Of course, this plays a big part but also in your personal time. Even take what you get at church and spend the rest of the week breaking it down. Spend the rest of the week looking at each Scripture and asking yourself, how do I fit here? And how does this Scripture fit with me? So that we're no longer praying, playing church, but we know how to live this genuine life with the Scripture. The genuine life with the Word of God that we read and what we're meditating on, that it convicts us, that it convinces us, that it changes us, that it challenges us until we get to a place where we're saying, oh, now I'm enlightened. Oh, now I have clarity. Oh, now I have understanding of this application in my life. You know, it really blows my mind to see any Christian sit back and be critical of another Christian because you become a part of the team accuser of the brethren. I don't even see how you have room for that. You got so many issues, and you can do a podcast criticizing some other guy. You're saying you're perfect while you're criticizing some imperfection, imperfection you found in somebody else's life. And before you do that, back up. Dude, you got plenty of issues in your life. How you doing a podcast on some other preacher or something like that? At least he's doing something. At least he's in the game. At least he's in the game trying to do something. So why would you want to become a part of team accuser of the brethren and just make it harder for him? But you know what? Some of y'all need this. Some of y'all, in order to be prepared for your destination, you need a good butt cook, kick, kicking, butt cooking, a, a butt kicking from somebody that just, just make you go there. Because he knows when you get to your destination, you're going to be surrounded by those kind of people. So you got to take that butt kicking course before you arrive at that destination to make sure you're, you got the necessary fruit and the necessary equipping to handle the situation. So you got to understand, you guys were born at this time because God knew you were supposed to be here now. 
You're a special type of person for a special type of generation, and you're going to be able to handle it, praise God. People that were born 100 years ago, they couldn't handle what's going on right now. But God has equipped you to be able to handle it, to deal with it, to minister to it, and to make a change. You're supposed to be here right now, today, at this particular time. You can handle it. You can handle it. So, what is this commitment to us? Let's begin and just allow these scriptures to speak to our hearts this morning. Psalms 37 and verse 23 through 25. Uh, what's God's part? Uh, what is his commitment in our guidance? How many of you want to know the plan of God for your life? Amen. Amen. I want to know the plan of God for my life. The greatest, greatest day of my life is when I discovered the plan of God for my life. Wow. But there were a lot of things that went to. I didn't necessarily want to go down that path. And there were some things that I had to really get into and, and, and understand. Look at this. Psalms 37, verse 23 through 25. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall. So there's going to be some falling going towards that path. Are you understand? Though he fall. You know, your greatest lessons come from sometimes from your biggest mistakes, your biggest, biggest mess up become greatest, your greatest messages and sermons and, and life lessons come from looking at you. And somebody want to call you an expert. Yeah, you're an expert in, in falling. <laughs> you know, the first time I went skiing, I, I struggled. I, I struggled with this. Well, I struggled with a lot of things. First of all, I'm the only black guy on a ski slope. <laughs> So I'm figuring I ain't got no business here in the first place. <laughs> Secondly, the little, the little thing that picks you up and takes you somewhere, I, I, I thought they were going to stop and let me get on. <laughs> so when I got on, I'm hanging halfway off the thing, and I'm like, you can kill somebody going up this high and all that. But they taught me how to fall because they, tell, they told me, now, if you run into somebody, you could be sued. I said, well, I, I learned how to fall. You know, I became an expert in falling. <laughs> I learned something. I learned not to go on that ski slope anymore. But sometimes you've got to recognize some of the stuff you go through. That may be the thing you need to know to help you get where you need to be. I never thought, I would have never believed that the Holy Ghost would be the one behind leading Jesus into the wilderness. But the Bible says Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil by the Holy Spirit. He led him into the wilderness. I wonder where he's going to lead you. See, we got this little daisy mentality, this on the clouds, uh, sipping a Coca-Cola mentality. Where's he going to lead you? God's going to lead you to the places that are going to prepare you for the destination. Amen? Amen? He says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Look at the next verse. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Now look at this in the Amplified Bible. Uh, Psalms 37, verse 23, in the, in the Amplified version here. He says, the steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in his way, and, and he busies himself with every step. 24. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord grasps his hand in support and upholds him. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's got your hand. So no matter what happens, God's got your hand. God's got your hand. Well, that's comforting to me. God's got my hand. God's got my hand. He's got me. He's got my hand. Boy, that's so comforting to me. God's got my hand. So the next time you fall, remember, God's got my hand. And sometimes you feel like I done fell so deep, ain't no recovery. God's got my hand. And look at this. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the uncompromisingly righteous forsaken 
or their seed begging bread. I've, one scripture says, I've never seen the uncompromisingly righteous uh, hungry and forsaken. That God will never, ever abandon you because of your righteousness. Say out loud, I'm the righteousness of God. So no matter what happens on your journey to discovering the plan of God for your life, God's got your hand. So you don't have to be afraid that no matter what happens, God's got my hand. He's not going to let me go. He's not going to forsake me. He's not going to leave me. Now, for, the, for, for a moment, it might seem like, uh-oh. But just remember, God's got me. God's got me. There have been several situations in my life where I simply heard those words in my spirit, I got you. I got you. I know it seems like something really, really bad's going to happen, but I got you. There's nothing that I allow you to go in without my hand gripped to yours. Hallelujah. Some of you don't even know how you got in the situation you're in right now, but God's got your hand. You remember that old song, put your hands in the hands of the man who steals the water? That's all I remember, but God's got your hand. Amen? Now, look at Jeremiah chapter 10. <coughs> Jeremiah 10, verse 23. God's got your hand, and he orders your steps. God's got your hands, and he orders your steps. God's got your hands, and he orders your steps. Now, now, some Christians say, well, that can't be God having me step here. Remember, the Holy Spirit led Jesus in the wilderness. Well, that can't be God that had me here. Here, Remember, the Holy Ghost led Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, why would God let this happen? Honey, he trying. He knows you got to take certain courses before you arrive. Some of y'all think you get saved and bam, you just show up. Well, you're just going to mess up a lot of lives because you don't know enough. I mean, one of the greatest deceptions is that we think we know more than we really know. And that's why I want to always be a student. I don't want to ever get to the place where I think I, I know something and have to realize, well, I, I guess I didn't know what, what I thought I knew. Thank God. Lord, teach me how to be content where I am trusting you and believing that you have my hands. So if I'm in an uncomfortable situation, remember what Paul says. Paul said, I learned how to be content in no matter what situation I was in. Lord, help me to continue to learn how to be content regardless of whatever the situation I'm in. When I'm up, I want to be content. When I'm down, I want to be content. When all my bills are paid, I want to be content. When they're not paid, I want to be content. When the IRS sent you a letter, I want to be content. Help me to know how to be just fine trusting you in no matter what situation it is. Why? Because I know wherever I am today, that's not where I'm always going to be. I am on my way somewhere. <laughs> I'm on my way somewhere. I'm on my way somewhere. And I guarantee you, wherever you are right now is, is just part of the equipping. So you can be ready when you arrive. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now, you ask the question, why are my steps ordered by the Lord? Look at this in the NLT, the New Living Translation. Now, this was pretty fascinating to me, that uh, the, the way of, of man is not in himself. It's, it's uh, put this up. Everybody look at this. Look at this. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. Now, stop right there. Can you recall sometime in your life, or maybe you've said it yourself, this my life, and I can live it the way I want to live it. All right, let me, let, me, let me help you. It's not your life. And that's the problem. First of all, you think it's your life, and then you proceed to try to live it the way you want to live it, and you, you wonder why things ain't working. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. 
we are not able to plan our own course. Now think with me for a moment. To now realize that your life is not your own and that you need him to help you to plan your own course. Think about the guy who says, this is my life and I do, I, I'm going to live the way I want to live. Let me, let me show you the problem with that. Here, here, is where the, here is where the problem comes in, is you're trying to live your life the way you want to live it, and you don't know how it's supposed to work. <laughs> you don't know how it's supposed to work. And that's the sad thing about it. And, and, and believe me, we're living in a generation right now where it's just filled with people, this is my life. I want to live like I want to live, how I want to live. I want to be what I want to be. I did it my way. And it's going to be like gravity. You can never win over gravity. You can, you can go on top of whatever building, but when you step off, gravity will always win. And see, you've been conditioned to just, you know, live by the moment. And, and social media will deceive you. Social media gives you a picture of everybody's happiness. But as soon as they posted it, the thing, the, the thing we got posted, it, it, they went back to the same depression argument. People who were ready to kill themselves will post something with a smile. And now you compare yourself with, with that. You're following somebody who's trying to plan his own life. And look at where it ends up. Now, here's what God wants. Can you get to the point where you say, Lord, this is not my life. You gave it to me. You've got a purpose and a plan for it. Help me to plan the course. Help me to plan the course. How are you not wanting to have something to do with the only one who really understands the plan and the course for your life? And you're so busy trying to get on somebody else's path while you keep going by past your path. Let me, let me talk to you for a moment here. What happens is we, in, in search of the plan and the will of God for our lives or trying to find purpose in our lives, when you X God out of that process, you leave it up to you to choose the path. And most of the time, you're right there at the will of God for your life and you choose the other path. Now, here's what happens. The other path takes you on a detour that may take two years of your life. And then you get back to that path again and watch this, you say something telling me to go to it. No, and then you choose your own path and you go on a four-year detour. Now you've lost six years in detour, in detour. And you keep coming back close to the path because God loves you. You keep coming there. But you don't want to have nothing to do with him. You don't want to have nothing to do with anything that contradicts your plans, your plans. So if God, if God, called you and equipped you and gifted you to do something, he's going to be the one to lead you to the path of you being able to use that gift and plan. But no, you've been busy comparing yourself amongst yourself, and you're so busy trying to be like somebody else, all you've been doing is pursuing a cheap copy. And God's trying to get you to go down that original path for you so you can be in a, a very valuable original. But you won't do that. You're so busy trying to be like somebody else. What tickles me is sometimes when I talk to, to, to our, our younger kids, they are, they're, they're actually deceived at the style they have that they originated. It. <laughs> and I'm thinking, little boy, you ain't originating nothing. You're just copying somebody else. You're too, you're, too, you're too afraid to originate something because God wants you to be that original. There's, a, there's an original part of you that can change somebody's life. Have you received spiritual clarity for your life? Discover the big picture of what God has done and gain new insight into studying the Bible for clarity. For your love gift of just $30 or more, you can receive the entire five-message series of Spiritual Blindness versus Clarity, which includes today's message in its entirety. When you're praying to try to get God to do something, you're blind. 
What you're saying is, I don't trust your faithfulness, so I'm going to be faithful. And for some reason, you think your faithfulness is greater than his faithfulness. And he says, I don't need you to be faithful. I just need your faith in my faithfulness. If you are spiritually blind to what Jesus has freely provided, then you're walking around no different than an unbeliever. For your love gift of $55 or more, you can receive the Spiritual Blindness versus Clarity 5-Message Series, along with the 4-Message Series, The Cure for Spiritual Blindness and How to Study the Bible MIDI Book. That's a $65 value for only $55. Simply call or visit the website on your screen today. I want you to look at your life, your family, your friendships, your job, your hobbies, every single piece that makes up your life, God cares about it. Not just your Sunday morning life. He came that every piece would be good, that every single piece would be covered with his love, with his favor. That's what it's all about. It's about you understanding that he's involved in every piece. Yes, he gave you salvation, but this life, this grace life, it's about the whole thing. It's about your flourishing in every piece of your life. Not just on Sunday morning, because he's not just a Sunday morning kind of God. And I'm on a mission to show you how to take back the victory in all those pieces. How every single piece of your life is covered under this grace. So join me July 6th through the 10th for Grace Life 2020. Register now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. And remember, no peace left behind. You know, if there's one thing I know, it is that prayer changes things. Glory be to God. When you pray, you give God permission to intervene and to interfere in your everyday affairs. So I wanna pray for you right now. Lord, I pray for every person watching. I pray for their family. I pray, come thy kingdom, be done thy will in their life, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. With long life, they'll experience salvation, redemption, restoration, recovery, pre preservation of life, long life. Lord, we just thank you today for the blessing of God overtaking them and overwhelming them in a way that they cannot help but to give you credit that this is your doing in their life. So we thank you for every person who's watching, Lord, for the peace of God, for the provision and the clarity of God in 2020 that their life will never be the same. They'll see you in a way that they've never seen you before. And so we thank you for the blessing that is at work. And all that agree said, amen. God bless you today. Thank you so much for writing. Thank you so much for tuning in and being connected to this ministry. And so we also want you to know that if you want to speak with one of our personal prayer counselors, you can feel free to contact us today. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to release the power of agreement so that we can come together and see God's will be done. God bless you. Do you need prayer for anything today? If so, contact us and let's take the matter before God in prayer. Post your prayer request online at creflodollarministries.org. We look forward to praying with you today. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends.